So now we've pretty much finished all of the new material in 1D kinematics. To sum up, I'd like to just write down all the equations that we've um, gathered along the way, I guess. Um, there, there are a few others, but these are the, the core, core equations. So the first is our definition of displacement, delta x equals x final minus x initial. And of course, you know, delta any variable equals that variable final minus that variable, no, variable initial. We could use that for velocity um, also. Uh, we have this equation for position, x final is equal to x initial plus vt. And this equation is only good for constant velocity, or in other words, no acceleration. Uh, and then we learned that our velocity can change if we have acceleration, and that looks like v final is equal to v initial plus at. So as our velocity changes over time, it changes, you know, linearly <clears throat> with our acceleration. Then we have an equation for how our position changes in time if we have acceleration. So that looks just like this equation, x initial plus v initial t. Now this is v initial because our velocity could be changing, plus another term, one half a t squared. And remember, if a equals zero, we plug a in here equals zero, that just, you know, that term equals zero, and we get back that equation from before. So really, this is just the simplified version of that. And lastly, we have our, what we call the time independent equation, v final squared minus v initial squared is equal to two a delta x. So these are our kinematic equations. Uh, when we do have acceleration, these, these are only true for constant a. So we will encounter problems, I mean, we'll encounter situations where our acceleration is changing and we have to pay attention to that. But, you know, if we're told, oh, the acceleration of the car is 1.2 meters per second squared or whatever, you know, implicitly we're saying that is constant acceleration. If we, if we're, if we're measuring the motion of a ball or something and the ball is going towards a wall and bounces off, you know, something like that, um, the acceleration in this process is not constant and we can't use these equations. So, um, so if something like runs into something else and changes its motion, that is a, that is a hint that something is, you know, we cannot use these equations blindly and maybe we just need to think about, you know, the first part of the motion up to the point when it hits the wall or the part after it, after it is done hitting the wall and bounces off, you know, just as a, as a conceptual example. Okay, so um, I think that's all I have to say about these equations. So how do we use these equations or how do we approach problems? The book at the beginning of chapter two has some problem solving steps, I guess. And I wanna walk you guys through them by doing an example. So we'll just start with an example problem and I will give you the, the steps as we, as we go through them. Okay, so the problem is this. We have an airplane. I'm gonna to have to write small because I wanna fit a bunch of stuff on here. Um, is flying at 110 meters per second. It slows down at a rate of uh, two meters per second squared, or you know, two meters per second per second, uh, for 15 seconds. So maybe they, they turn the engines down or, you know, something like that. Uh, so the question is, how far does it go during that time? How far does it go in that time? Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna try to fit, um, fit some stuff on our tiny board here. So our problem solving steps in the book uh, go like this, and I have, I have one to add to the book's steps. I'll tell you, I'll tell you where that goes. Okay, so our first, our first step is to sketch the problem. Okay, so the sketch doesn't have to be good. It should show the, um, 
you know, initial and final positions of the object if it's moving. Uh, you should label the velocities if you know them. So here, here is our airplane. Um, that's actually not a bad stick figure airplane. Uh, I'm kind of happy with that. So it's flying at 110 meters per second. We'll say it's going to the right. Airplanes aren't good at flying backwards. Um, and when it gets over here, uh, it is going, still going to the right at some different velocity. We don't know what that is. Um, and we want to know this distance. All right, so we've drawn our little sketch. Um, we don't have all of the variables up there, but we have, you know, some of the relevant ones, the ones that fit into the picture nicely. So let's move on to step two, which is define our coordinate system. Uh, in this case, for, you know, 1D kinematic problems, uh, everything's happening in the X direction. So we're going to basically define an X axis. And to the right, is going to be positive as it often is. And as part of our coordinate system, we can decide what we want to call the origin. And it is going to be easiest if we call this initial position the origin x equals zero. Um, we don't have to, but but hopefully you believe me that that's the easiest choice. Um, we'll get into situations where the initial position is not zero in, um, in chapter two for sure. Okay, uh, so <laughs> Uh, the book, for some reason, is missing step two and a half between steps two and three. And step two and a half is my step. Um, and that is just write down a list of all of the variables. Um, and it's, you know, that's not, it's as simple as it sounds. So for all 1D kinematics problems, we have six variables. Um, six, you can count them in these 1D problems. So X initial, X final, V initial, V final, acceleration, and finally, time T. So we can write down our values of these. So I, when I say write down the variables, I mean write down the, the, the you know letters and also write down the values that go along with those. And we can pay attention to things that we know, things that we don't know, things that we're trying to find to kind of maybe give us some direction. Okay, so x initial, like we just defined, it is equal to zero. x final, well, that's where the plane is at the end. Uh, we don't know, right? But that is the answer. How far does it go in that time? So how far does it go is like the displacement or the distance traveled either way. Uh, that's gonna be this position minus this position and we're gonna get some positive number of meters. So this is what we're looking for. And I'm gonna put a star next to this because, because we're looking for it. That's our, our goal, you know. So the initial here, uh, we are also given, it starts at 110 meters per second. The final is another thing that we do not know. Um, but in this case, we don't really care what V final is. If we can solve this problem, if we can get away with not needing to find V final, that's, you know, that's fine. Acceleration. Okay, here's the one tricky part of this problem. And that is, it tells you it slows down at a rate of two meters per second squared. If you're not reading carefully, you might just write, oh, A equals two meters per second squared. But it is slowing down, which means our acceleration is in the opposite direction our initial velocity. And our initial velocity is to the right, which means our acceleration has to be to the left, which means it is minus two meters per second squared. That's a tricky, a tricky point. Uh, we talked about that in the previous lecture video about speeding up versus slowing down, so hopefully that makes sense. If the initial were negative, then slowing down would be a positive acceleration. Hopefully that isn't a confusing statement. Anyway, uh, A is opposite V initial, so V is positive, so A has to be negative, that's all. So minus two meters per second squared, and the time we're also given, we know how long it takes the plane to go from here to here. 
it is 15 seconds. Okay, so this is good. We want X final. We know everything except for X final and V final, and we don't really care about V final. So if we had an equation with this, 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 and this, that would be great because then there's one unknown and we can solve for that. If you look at your equation sheet, it turns out there is exactly such an equation. I will erase those and hope I remember <laughs> the values. Uh, and that equation is x final equals x initial plus v initial t plus one half a t squared. This is our, um, our position equation for an object that's accelerating. Uh, oh, <laughs> I skipped step three. Step three is to uh, write down, I didn't skip it, I was just doing it before I wrote down this part. Uh, write down the appropriate kinematics equation. And here I have done that. Okay, so uh, step four is to simplify the equation uh, and plug in the variable. So by simplify, I mean sometimes large parts of the equation are just equal to zero, like if we had a problem where v initial was zero, we wouldn't have to put the v initial, you know, we don't have to say zero times t, like we can just say, oh, v is zero, so that goes to zero. That v is not zero in this problem, that was just hypothetical. Uh, in this problem with our variables, there isn't that much simplifying to do. Um, we do know x initial is zero, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, v initial, we, uh, we do know that's 110 meters per second. T is 15 seconds, and we have one half times A, which is minus two, times T squared, which is 15 squared. Okay, uh, so step five is to solve for the desired unknown variable, which in this case we already have done because the equation we were, you know, is in our notes in terms of x final, and x final is what we're looking for. So all I have to do is type this into the calculator. So 110 times 15 is 1,650. And here we have one half times minus two, so that's just minus one, and 15 squared is 225. And that gives us 1,425 meters when we type that all into our calculator. So that is the answer, but our to-do list is not quite done. There is one more step. Check your answer. So uh, does this answer make sense? And we can speak, you know, in many problems, this can be a very rough guess, but you know, does it make sense for an airplane to travel, you know, uh, 1,400 meters, that's 1.4 kilometers, so about a mile in 15 seconds? Um, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, airplanes can go fast. Um, if this was like a, a million meters or something, you know, a thousand kilometers, that would be too fast, right? You can't go thousands of miles in 15 seconds. That's too fast for an airplane. Or if we got three meters in 15 seconds, it's like, oh, that doesn't seem right either. That would be more like, you know, a really slow walk or something like that. So, um, so the point is, we don't have to know exactly how fast planes fly to at least have some guess if we're correct within a factor of a hundred, right? What I don't want you guys to do is type numbers in your calculator, get something wrong and say, oh, the plane traveled three times 10 to the minus six meters when you should have been able to look at that answer and be like, this answer is wrong. I need to check my work, check how I plug things in my calculator, et cetera. Um, so even if you're not an expert in airplanes, everybody should be able to at least have a, you know, very rough guess of, of what to expect for an answer to a problem like this. All right, so this is our, our six plus one is seven um, steps for solving kinematics problems. And this is still gonna apply in chapter two, so we're gonna use these same techniques for a little while. So, um, you know, you can, you can practice these and get used to them. I'm not going to require you to do these steps. I'm not going to grade based on whether or not you do these steps. Um, as long as you show your work 
and you know, get to the right answer at the end. It, uh, it's not important to me that you follow this exact recipe, but certainly if you're having trouble or if you're, you know, trying to learn how to get started with these sorts of problems, uh, I recommend at least, you know, trying this and seeing if it's helpful for you.